All right, welcome everybody. We're sitting down with the rowdy one, Rondo Rousey, getting you ready for UFC 157. You've got a very tough opponent, yes. a very, very tough opponent yeah. in Liz Carmouche. Talk, talk to us about this. Uh, well, Liz Carmouche, is a, she's a former Marine and served three tours. Uh, she's also the only openly gay fighter right now. So um, she's one of the top 135 pounders in the world, and she was the only girl that was really calling for this fight. The other girls were like, uh, about that Rana chick. We want to cover a little, <laughs> little more time. And Carmouche was like, me, I'll do it. Put me in there. I want to be part of this. And, you know, I respect the girl, but she's, uh, she's definitely a, a very tough opponent that I'm taking extremely seriously. It sounds like she has a little bit of your attitude. Yeah, I yeah, can't help but respect her. <laughs> I, I love it. All right, listen, you're, you're going to be fighting out of uh, Anaheim, the Honda Center. Yes, sir. You're, you're a Southern California gal. You must be very, very excited to be making your, you know, your UFC debut there. Yeah, yeah. It all, everything is kind of coming together and um, it happening organically like this. It's all coming together. It's like a big point, like the have the debut in my own backyard. And it's called the Honda Center. My name is Rhonda. I mean, come on, how many <laughs> things can we put together? Where I'm like, awesome A, awesome B, awesome C. I'm coming out, I'm running out of things to think of that would be even better. Okay, let me ask you about this because, I mean, obviously, you're the first female UFC champion. Do you see yourself as a trailblazer and do you feel any extra pressure, extra, you know, weight to kind of carry the women's division? Um, I mean, I've always kind of done uncommon things for a living, so, um, you know, uh, I don't really wake up in the morning and think, well, I'm, I feel like a pioneer today, <laughs> you know, it's just like, okay, we had this fight coming up, and I gotta, like, we gotta get this done, and this done, and this done, it's just, it's awesome that we made as much progress that we have, but um, it's one thing getting in the UFC, and it's another thing staying in the UFC and proving that, you know, that female fighters are are something valuable that need to be, you know, kept and maintained. And with, you know, with women's sports, it's a constant fight, you know, even if you make a little bit of headway, it's, it's always possible that you could, you know, fall back. So uh, I just feel like there's, there's a whole lot more work to do. All right. So I think the, the, the viewers at home, I mean, the vast majority are going to have no idea who you are, but they're going to see it and they're going to see a beautiful girl and they're going to say, this girl really kicks butt and you really do. You've got what, six, uh, six wins, you're six and oh, all have come by first round arm bars, which is incredible by the way. But I think, I think what they don't know is that you've also got a heck of a resume. I'm looking down here. You're, you're a phenom judoka, 17 years old. You qualified for the Olympics. Then in 2008, you, you go down to Beijing and you win the very, very first judo uh, medal for in the Olympics. I, I well, mean, not ever in the Olympics. Well, for, oh, for, for the for, American for, women. For American was, women, yeah, exactly. So it was accepted as a full-fledged sport. <laughs> yes. But it wasn't like, this is the first medal ever, and it goes to you. <laughs> but yes, the first American female to win a, a judo medal a, a, at the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it, it's to me, it's very interesting. You've got this pretty hardcore resume as well. Yeah, um, you know, it's, uh, I was not meant for a desk, I, I guess. Um, this is what makes me happy, and it's kind of like the unbeaten path is pretty bumpy, and it was really risky. And you know, my mom was very skeptical of a lot of my career choices because yes. you know she would like me to take the safe route and just like go get a degree and go you know make sure that you have a good job and all that stuff. But um, you know, I just I, I wouldn't have been happy uh, with that lifestyle. You know, everyone else in my family is academic with masters and PhDs and all these things, and. Um, I just realized that I w it was miserable in school, and why should I spend eight years in school to do a job that I didn't even like that much anyways? Uh, can I ask you about that? What does your family think about, about you fighting? And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but just the fact of the matter is, you know, the, other, the older generations, they don't get it. They don't understand women getting into the cage and, and fighting. Well, my mom was the first American to ever win the World Championships in Judo, which is in 1984 uh, in Vienna, Austria, and she did this while getting her PhD working as an engineer and a single mother. So um, <laughs> we go all out in our family. <laughs> so I guess you laugh when, when I talk to you about pressure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm still trying to, to reach the level she's at. So, um, you know, people are like, oh, you've done so much. And I just think of it as like, I got so much left to do. Uh, let's talk about role models. I, I, I know that um, you made some very um, headline grabbing statements about Kim Kardashian. Uh, I want to ask you about that. W what do you think about Kim as a role model? I, I mean, obviously you disapprove. I mean, I think that, you know, if you're going to make money doing what you're doing, that's fine. You know, if you're going to make sex videos and that's your thing that you do, that's fine. You know, go sell something that's appropriate to that audience. Sell, like, lingerie and lube. Don't try and sell Skechers to my little sister or nail polish to little kids. You know, it just doesn't, it, I, I didn't like the message behind that. And, um, and you know, the fact that you have a little sister, that, that's something that, actually, that you actually think of. 
Well, yeah, I saw her walking around the house in those Skechers, and I was like, what are you doing wearing porno shoes? Take those off. And um, I just realized, like, what, what is going on with this world right now? Why is this girl even associated with footwear? I don't understand. She obviously didn't spend that much time on her feet. <laughs> <laughs> that may have to get edited out, but that's Why? okay. Why? <laughs> that was clever, and it didn't have any swear words in it. Why? That's I can't say point. something clever. That's a very good point. All right, let, let me ask you. Be, I have to talk about cookies all day. Do you want, if you wanted me to come up here and bake a cake, I would come here and bring you ingredients. If and you don't want me to come here and talk and edit everything out, then why am I here? You know, I don't doubt the fact that you can bake a mean cake. Can, can I ask, ask Dude, you about... Dude, I cannot bake a cake. Okay, got it. You're well, wrong about another thing. Let's keep going. All right. <laughs> I think this is the first time that someone has sat in this chair and thrown me for a loop. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. People might not realize this. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might not even want to admit it, but you know, I've seen your YouTube videos. You're actually a, a relatively girly girl. You wear the makeup, you, you make the Sailor Moon references, you, you talk mm -hmm. about Chun Li. You know, you, you appreciate looking good in the cage and outside of the cage as well. People might not realize that because when they watch you inside the cage, my God, you <laughs> are a vicious animal. You're, you're trying to tear limbs off. This is all true. <laughs> what do you want me to say about that? <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Is there a question implied? <laughs> yes. The question is, you know, how do you balance that? You know, the whole, I guess, the femininity and also just kind of getting inside the cage and, again, being that uh, savage animal. Uh, you know, it was really hard for me to balance that. When I was younger, I was very much, you know, a tomboy and everything. Like, when, even when I was a little kid, and I cut my hair short and everyone called me Ronnie, you know. I got confused as one of the Hansons when I was like 10. It was very traumatizing. My sisters never let me forget it. And um, it was only uh, after the Beijing Olympics and I was started bartending and I had to like, you know, I was working for tips so I had to play up and try putting makeup on and try and putting on nice clothes and um, <laughs> that's when it just kind of first started where I took a whole year away from athletics and tried to be normal. And then uh, when I came back into MMA, I, I didn't really lose all of that. You know, I kind of gained a lot more confidence um, being like in a normal social setting instead of just constantly in a gym. All right, so we talk about you being a, a, a girly girl. We talk about you being a role model and a trailblazer in the sport. When I think of those attributes, I, I think of another gal by the name of Danica Patrick. She's been a trailblazer in her sport, but recently she's kind of, I guess, chafed at the word sexy, but yet, uh, she's made millions of dollars in advertising being this sexy role model who's also tremendous at her sport. What do you think about, I guess, her attitude there? And, and do you understand where she's coming from? I mean, I've seen the GoDaddy.com commercials. I mean, she plays it up. She can't, she can't like, go into an ad and be, like, unzipping her thing and then being like, I don't understand why everyone's implying I'm using the sexual. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to play it up, and embrace it. You know, go for it. It's fine, you know? Just, um... I, I, I don't know. I, was, I wouldn't try so hard to lean towards that and then resent it afterwards. You know, if you don't like it, don't do it. So how about for yourself? I, I mean, obviously, you know, once you become, you know, more well-known, I mean, I'm sure the advertisers are going to come out to you. And you've done some modeling on your own anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is that something that, that you're cognizant of, that you're aware of? You know, the whole, I guess, it's, it's strange, but there's a sexuality involved with female athletes that's not really present with male athletes. Are, are you aware of that as well? And, and what do you think about all that? Uh, yeah, I'm aware of it. And it's, you know, it's something that I think that the, the female athletes can use to, um, to grab the, the initial attention of the general public. You know, it was like the fight between me and Misha, you know, she's pretty easy on the eyes and I don't think I'm ugly. And, um, <laughs> But and a lot of people tuned into that fight just because that's the only reason. But when they watched the fight itself, it was Great an fight. amazing fight, and it was technical, and it was back Very and forth, technical. and all over the place. It was, and that you know, even though that that you know that sexy thing might have brought people to it initially, it was the actual you know the skill and the athleticism and that made people stay and want to see more and have them. Had a lot of people gained respect for the women fighters after that, and I think that. Uh, it's that's the advantage of using the whole sexy thing, you know, you know, bring just show them something shiny to get their attention and then show them something real to keep it. That's a very good point. You know, I think about the women's division and, and, and to me and I think to most fans, I think they think that the UFC's women division right now is in a relatively fragile state. I mean, it, it's it wouldn't be out of the question to say it's it's in its embryonic stages here. OK, mm -hmm. but when we think about the women's division, there's really, in my mind, only a handful of stars, and most of those stars aren't in the UFC. Heck, they don't even fight in your weight class. I think about a, a, a Cyborg Santos, who I know that you've called out many, many times. There's been a relative war of words there. Another gal, Gina Carano, who is, I guess, retired now, being an actress somewhere. But 
uh, when you think about that, do you think the UFC needs to bring in those stars to kind of, I guess, you know, build up that division? I mean, they need to bring in stars to build up a division or they need to build their own, but I don't think the entire fate of the sport is dependent on any two people, and I don't want it to be dependent on me either. I want it to uh, be able to sustain itself and have more and more girls coming in, and um, I think that's entirely possible. The, the UFC, like the whole organization was started from nothing and they had no stars and they built them themselves and brought them up. And I think that they're entirely capable of doing the same thing with the women. Would you like to see a Cyborg Santos come into the UFC? Yeah, I would love to beat her up anywhere. <laughs> Even in the back room, I'd love to do that. Whether it's in an octagon or if it's over there, I'm down. Well, you know, I also mentioned another name, uh, Gina Carano. You know, people say, oh, uh, Ronda Rousey is a, is a trailblazer. And, and, but, I, you know, I, and you are. There's no question. You're the first UFC female champion. So, of course, there's tons of praise and adulation there. But, ah, I remember I'm a MMA historian. So I remember not too long ago, a gal by the name of Gina Carano was doing kind of the same thing that you are doing. Mm -hmm. She became very, very popular and you know, for all intents and purposes, basically left the sport in 2009, just as she was becoming famous. Would you like to see, I guess, her come back to the sport and maybe embrace it again? You know what? Gina's done so much and she's done such a pioneer that I think that her going and following the whole movie thing is doing us just as much good, you know, as her actively competing. You know, like her being in these movies is reaching people that never knew anything about women's MMA, and now they're like, oh, who's this Gina Carano girl? Where did she come from? You know, what she's doing is helping just as much, I think, as the girls that are actively fighting. UFC 157, how do you see it playing out? And don't tell me first round armbar, although I think that's what you're going to tell me. No, I never call my fights beforehand. <laughs> I never know how they're going to end up. And, you know, I, I've trained arm bars the longest, and it's usually my first inclination, but um, I'm going to be My God, preparing. first inclination? You, you're pulling out these arm bars in like five seconds. I mean, I've never seen anything like this well, before. Well, you know, if your mom would jump on you every five seconds and go, <laughs> arm bar now, you know, you'd get, okay, you know, <laughs> you just get used to doing it. And um, yeah, I never know how it's going to go. I prepare for the absolute worst. I prepare for a five round war where it's going to be really, really close, but I aim for you know the most efficient first round finish i i do not want anyone to ever hit me in front of my mother so um <laughs> and I she will to, be there she will be there yeah. so i always try to end it quickly why should people you know shell out the hard-earned dollars to to watch around a, a, a woman that quite frankly they probably don't know well, well tickets go on sale on the 21st so the second that you realize that the world did not end you should celebrate <laughs> the mayan apocalypse not happening by buying my ticket <laughs> And, um, you know, it's a piece of history. It's something that you're going to want to tell people later, like, I saw that fight live, or I ordered that fight. I watched it when it happened. You know, it's, uh, and plus, like, the undercard, you know, is that uh, we got uh, Hendo and uh, Machida. We got, you know, Raya and Menjivar. Uh, we got Brendan Schaub fighting that one big dude. You know, my, um, <laughs> my, man, my uh, teammate, Manny Gamburian. So it's, it's a really packed card, and it's not just me. It's everybody on it, you know, and I think this is something special, and it's going to be a great night of fights anyway, and anyone that hasn't even watched MMA before, I think you should just watch it. I mean, it's, it's some, there's nothing like it in the whole world. You're not going to believe it once you give it a chance and sit down and watch it. It's not a spectacle. It's really an art. You know, martial art means the art of war, and people, I think fighting is one of the most natural things just in human nature. You have to fight. You know, what is it now everyone gets sued for everything? You know, we can't live this, like, bubble-wrapped existence where, you know, you don't even touch anything rough on your skin all day long. It gives you, keeps you grounded in reality. And, you know, knowing that we aren't just iPhone accessories. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, watch some fights and watch something real instead of, like, another episode of, what's a, what's a network you don't like? <laughs> What's a network I don't like? I don't want to reference something that you're like, we love the new girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I can talk trash as, as easily or, or as well as you, but, but listen, it, it's, it's been great to sit down with you and obviously a very, very interesting, very, very talkative Ronda Rousey getting you ready for UFC 157. Ronda, thank you for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it.